All right, so I know what you're probably thinking. This looks different than the last time you saw it. And you would be correct. Uh, long and short, I sent this out to get flow tested. Uh, shout out to uh, Super L98 on Corvette form for taking his time and doing some work on it. But uh, basically, uh, being on a flow bench, obviously we're able to see uh, things that you wouldn't normally see. And let me just first start by saying, if I were to have bolted this onto the car the way that you last saw it, it would have made a huge difference. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So that's good. But now that we have data, we can make it better. Now, I'm not going to go into the data uh, in this video only because uh, I want to wait till I have the uh, finalized numbers as well as uh, numbers for the stock intake. But basically, we discovered a couple things. First off, the runners flow better with the crossover ports plugged. So, they're getting welded and plugged. No, no, no need to discuss it. It's happening. Um, secondly, the original way I had my epoxy on here, it worked, but it didn't really. Um, basically, what we came to was we needed a radius here, followed by a basically ski jump on this side. So that's cool. So uh, we're going to work on that. Uh, Doug helped uh, knife edge a little bit of this, did a little bit of blending on the mounts to try and get the flow between the runners even. So uh, again, thank you for that. And then, uh, you know, he just obviously marked and numbered all the runners. Now I went through the data sheet for the way that the intake sits right now, and I marked the best through worst runners. So basically, number seven here is the best, number four is the worst. And the way I'm going to fix that is actually surprisingly simple. And again, I'm going to thank Doug for this because he's the one who suggested it. And I forget if it was from Visored or Lingenfelter or it was, it was one of those guys. But basically he said, get a piece of cardstock on a stick, cut it so that it passes all the way through the port, and then just make the other ones match that. And I thought, huh, well that's actually very genius. And I will say this right now, one and two, which are the two best flowing ones, are the only ones that this will pass through. And what's even weirder, it, it, there's a pattern. Best best look where they are in the runner this is the worst this is the second worst now yes I get what you're saying but here's the thing even though this is the second worst this is the third best so there's potential on this port still to get a little better as well um, port 6 is number 4 and Port 5 is number 3, but the thing is, the difference between 4, 5, uh, I'm sorry, the difference between runners 6, 5, uh, 3, and 1, I guess, very close, uh, like, actually surprisingly close. The outliers are 4, eight and uh i mean yeah three's not the greatest but it's still it's a lot better than four and eight so like the the difference between four and eight is like five cfm but the difference between eight and three is like 12 or 15 which is pretty substantial um so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a weld built up on this. I ain't, I ain't dealing with the epoxy anymore at this point. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a permanent solution. So, we're going to have this all welded so that it's permanent, safe, don't got to worry about it. And uh, also, in that video with the data, we got this guy flowed too. And depending on how you feel about doing work yourself 
the results on this bad boy may surprise you. But uh, let's let's get into this real quick. So I made this guy. I cut it so that it fits through. Obviously, I, I chamfered the corners because I'm never going to get those perfectly. So that'll just be an eyeball. But basically, this intake the way it sits right now. The standard deviation for uh, all the ports is around 11, if I'm remembering correctly. Not great. Um, as it was shipped to him when I originally did it, it was actually 7, which is surprisingly good. But just by plugging these crossover ports up, picked up like 12 CFM on the uh, paired runners that have the crossovers in it. So they're gone. Done. Don't You don't have to tell me twice. Um, I don't understand why, but if it improves on the flow bench, yeah, I get that these were added for a reason, and obviously there's some sort of tuning effect going on that we're not going to see on the flow bench, but at the same time, Renegade doesn't have it. Most intakes don't have it, so I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's gonna make a drivability difference because the early intakes didn't have it and most of the third gen cars with it didn't have it and I don't think bolting one to the other you would actually really see the difference anyway we got this guy I marked it and basically all I'm shooting for like you can hear it rubbing obviously but it does pass, like, I'm not pushing, pulling, I'm barely holding on with it with just my fingertips, not even really pinching the rod, and it passes through. Let's go to five. And five, like, there's spots where I'm, it's like, I'm pushing on it to get it to go through. So, if we get this, we won't punch through the water jackets, if we can make it go through like this because sevens already opened up to this size and in theory we should be able to open everything up to this size and get substantially improved flow out of it so basically what's going to happen is i'm going to send this out to get welded in the next video i'll show you uh, just like little snippets of all the grinding i'm doing on everything and, and how it's going and then uh we'll go from there but uh for now, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be pretty good. Now, uh, I do want to get the stock one flowed. I alluded to that earlier. I want to see how much we picked up. Because I found a number online, and I, I will I will, uh, I will tell you that number. Uh, I found it to be about 145 CFM average between all eight, which is all well and good. But I want the numbers for everything. On the same flow bench that way you can just go and you can say okay this is what a stock one does this is what a ported one does and this is what a renegade does on that flow bench so that there's no discrepancies between it it's this is what it does period because it's all being compared on the same piece of equipment okay so anyway i found the stock one flows about 145 and as i'm sure some of you have seen car has been on the dyna Put down 275 horsepower to the wheels and 340 foot pounds of torque. If you look at the dyno graph, that's like that. It goes up and then flattens out. So uh, basically, it stops flowing around 3,800, 4,000, which is what everybody would have expected with a port that's about yay big. Interestingly enough, there's an equation for CFM, and I believe it's from trick flow. Uh, CFM to horsepower, and you can do some voodoo math. Um, I assumed like 8% drivetrain loss on the stick car, which is probably in the ballpark of about right. Because I... I used a, uh, what do you call it, ET calculator with the car's rough rate and what I've gotten as far as like quarter mile passes in uh, data logs. And it, it coincides with that, but you you back calculate the crank horsepower from that, roughly. And 
and using that number that I found for the CFM of the stock intake and using 8% from the uh, drivetrain losses from the dyno and the ET calculator. Um, everything kind of jives with that equation pointing to the car making about 300 grand horsepower. Which, yeah, that's probably about right. Um, obviously, it's taxing the flow of the intake. But um, as it sits right now, this is a substantial improvement over the uh, stock one. Uh, I'd give you a percent. I don't know the rough percentage right now, but uh, basically as it sits right now, it would in theory be able to support double what a, what the engine was rated at from the factory. Should be able to, I should say, using that equation. Obviously, we're going to test it on the dyno and, and make sure everything's good, but um, that's kind of where we're at right now. So, I'm going to drop this off to my buddy, hopefully tomorrow, have him get started on welding everything, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm also going to have him do the, uh, this guy back here, where I punched through into the, into number two, the runner, where I just have it epoxied right now, because uh, I don't, again, I don't want any epoxy in here. I don't, this is permanent. I don't ever want to have to worry about it, so... Uh, We'll get we'll get a jump on that. Uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. Sorry it's long. Sorry it's just me pointing to stuff. But uh, I hope that's something you find interesting. But uh, just to go through it. Uh, best, second best, third best, fourth best, fifth best, sixth best, seventh best, worst. So, thank you all for watching.